in life we often say uh, I should have done this or I should have done that or how can it happen that I didn't think that the right thing to do was that or that one never mind and uh, oh what a big mistake I did at that time or I was not uh, good enough to attempt at all this task I attempted so this is why it did not went as I expected it to go and so on so we whenever sometimes we have the we are not capable to respond effectively according to our own expectations in a certain situations we have a persistent sense of error of mistake so uh, and we accuse ourselves for doing this mistake uh, because we live actually in polarized uh, societies which uh, tear us up in two and split us in two halves and one half of us scolds the other half as when we were children and uh, the environment were scolding us as whole entities as children and now we split in two and one half um, reproduces the environment scolding the other half that was let's say supposedly mistaken however in an existential approach the very idea of mistake of error cannot exist and uh, this uh, line of thinking this inspiration is uh, in the core of uh, the theory and philosophy of uh, gestalt therapy and i like very very much this approach that mis the very idea the, of the concept of uh, uh, error of mistake simply cannot exist let us see why now Let's suppose that I have in my shoes a callus, a problem in my foot, in my leg, let's say. And uh, could I go in life somewhere without carrying my callus or any other problem that I have in my leg? I have to carry my callus or my broken leg or whatever, wherever I go. Now, maybe in my own mind, I can think, I can fantasize that I can become a marathon runner without any, any problem, uh, no matter my callus or no matter my plaster on my broken leg or whatever. But in practice, it is not possible. I am not able to, do, to go, to, to, to run like a marathon runner. Uh, in my fantasy, I can. In life, I cannot because I carry my injured foot anyway with me wherever I go. Now, if we go, if we turn out to uh, some say, psychological uh, point of view, every human being is a kind of, uh, uh, let's say that it is a system, it's a whole, a whole. And uh, this whole consists of our mental part, of our conscious part, in which we say, I am me, I determine myself, and I say consciously, I am Petros, with my mind, my mental state, I say, I am Petros. However, Petros, as a whole, is not only what I... I define, I perceive with my conscious mind. Because today we know that our conscious part is not more than 12% of our existence. The rest of it, 88%, approximately the number, the, the figures are only just to indicate it. Uh, the rest, 88%, it's non conscious and it has to do not with mind, logic, and consciousness but only with feelings, emotions, senses, and our bodies. And all of it is beyond our conscious, consciousness. We cannot see it, we cannot understand it with our logic, with our mind. I like to call this 
uh, Our Shadow. Uh, it is also the title of my second book. This it's a thorough study about the shadow, the concept of the shadow. So every human being, as a whole, consists of, uh, let's say, a mental conscious part and a part, a big part that it's not conscious. So when wherever I do, I go. Whatever I do, whatever I decide to do, it's not question only of my conscious part, but also of my non-conscious part. What I mean is this. In nature today, we know that uh, all physical systems tend to change their state of dynamic balance in time following two basic and simple principles. One is that, uh, that this next state of balance must uh, permit the most possible exchange of energy between the components of the system. And the second guideline is uh, that this exchange uh, might, may happen in the easiest possible way. In an example now, let's say that I decide consciously and mentally to go in this direction. And also, let's suppose that in these directions there is somewhere a situation that uh, is causing fear to me and agitating a kind of non-conscious fear deeply, deeply behind my, my consciousness. Uh, into my shadow. So, when I try to go in this direction, this fear is agitated, is blocking me, and, and the energy between my components cannot flow freely, cannot uh, be, um, sati this situation cannot be satisfying for my system because my fear, non-conscious fear, is agitated. So, instead of going there, I go to that direction. I change. And I am astonished, surprised. Why? I wanted to go there. I planned to go there. How does it happen and I go there? Yes, this happens because I am a whole and the decisions to, uh, are not taken only by my mental conscious part, but also from my non-conscious part, uh, actually my wholeness decides where to go. But if I, I think that I am only what I am in my mind, I figure out in my mind, then I can very easily perceive as a mistake this, uh, this deviation of my initial um, uh, goal. Or I might uh, say, for example, that uh, I'll go to my girlfriend tonight and I tell her that I cannot suffer anymore the situation, that it's, I'm very angry with her after what she has done to me and I want to stop our relationship. I'm very much decided to do this. Or I say that um, from tomorrow, from now, I will um, start, I'm changing what I'm eating and I'm going to lose 20 kilos in one month, or, okay, let's be more realistic, 5 kilos in one month, let's say. So I go to my girlfriend, and instead of saying all this I had to say, I say, oh, hello, my love, how are you? I hug her, I caress her. Why? Because actually, in me, when I get to, I go to meet my girlfriend, there is also, apart my anger, for whatever she might have done to me, uh, it's also my love for her or my fear not to lose her or whatever. So my initial expectation to say this and that, this and that, very angry to her, uh, is not realized because as a system, as a whole, in a holistic way of thinking, uh, I am better by not expressing my anger in this situation. Also with... Uh, uh, the kilos is the same thing. Let's let's say that I start from next day uh, fanatically and full of enthusiasm, fitness, uh, eating nothing and so on. I lose a lot of kilos and then I take them all. Why? Because I am here now. I figure with my fantasy, I go there, very thin and beautiful there. Uh, I start going there, 
but I take with me also all the factors, all the things, all the elements, all the emotions or whatever were inside me, all the blocks that made me take all these kilos that now I want to lose. I don't go in the next day only in the fitness, to do fitness only with uh, my enthusiasm and uh, my full fanatic uh, mood to go and lose kilos. I carry also my fears, or, or all my stops, my blocks and so on. Because in each moment we try our, as holes to balance our conscious and non-conscious aspects. Now, maybe this, is, this might seem to someone like a very good excuse for anything that I want. I can do anything that I like and there is an excuse. This was the best for me to do. No. Why? Because when I do something, conscious and non-conscious parts of mine that participate in my decision, in my action, are still mine. Existentially, I am responsible for what I am doing. I have to learn, not you, it's me who has to learn from what I do in each moment and may be proved dysfunctional or destructive for myself or the people around me. And then I have to accept the responses of the environment towards me. So this idea of doing of that uh, mistake does not exist, error does not exist, and in each moment I do the best I can, uh, the best that there is, uh, is not an excuse, is not taking responsibility out of me, out of my, uh, for, for my actions. Actually, it is much more difficult to follow this path pathway of thinking and seeing myself as a wholeness, because in each moment, in whatever I do, I am totally responsible for my actions. Mistake cannot exist and uh, uh, error cannot exist uh, because we are holes that seek to find the uh, position of next uh, of balance, the next position of dynamic balance in terms of the most possible exchange of energy between the elements and in the most uh, easy way for this exchange to happen. Unfortunately, our societies uh, do not educate, okay, educate us in, in um, this way. They, instead of, of uh, supporting us to learn how to, uh, what to do with our wholeness, it's not that there is not at all in our consumerist technocratic um, societies of uh, social media and so on, uh, there is not at all uh, this holistic point of view stance in life. Uh, actually, it is a, a polarizing mentality, a splitting mentality in two parts. One thinking that uh, whatever I have in mind is, okay, it's me, I can do it, so I'm strong to do it, and if I don't do it, I'm not good enough, or I did a mistake or an error. So I cut myself in two, as I said in the beginning of this video, and I scold my other part who did the mistake. This is totally a dysfunctional education, uh, instead of a holistic point of view that teaches us that at, very, at every moment we are responsible for what we do and what we feel, not only of what we think. Thank you very much for watching this video.